In today's video, wow. I'm going to tell you how I went from this. Two. Three. To this. video about not giving up and to tell you how I achieved my goal of doing 10 pull-ups at the age of 52. To set the scene I started weight training in January 2015 when I met Andrew who is now my husband and we trained together every other night and the first goal I set myself was to be able to do push-ups because I couldn't do any push-ups and at the time I was 50 and I wanted to be able to do 50 push-ups before the end of my 50th year. It took me all year to achieve this, but I did it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't keep much of a record of my push-ups, so I don't know exactly how long it did take, but I, I do think it took me the whole year to actually achieve this. And then at the beginning of 2017, I saw some videos on YouTube and there were they were of people doing what looked like superhuman moves on pull-up bars. I was totally mesmerized and it really inspired me to be able to do a pull-up. But at that time I couldn't even do one pull-up. It's interesting though because I thought I had a good base. I looked strong and I'd been weight training for about two years at this point and I'd been doing back exercises and bicep exercises, all exercises that should help me to be able to do a pull-up. I've been doing lap pull-downs, face pulls, bicep curls, I've tried the assisted pull-up machine. So I started to do assisted pull-ups with Andrew's help. The first problem was I couldn't actually reach the pull-up bars in the gym and I was rubbish at jumping up to them. So Andrew would lift me up by my waist until my chin was at the top above the pull-up bar and then I would lower myself back down slowly and he'd grab me around my legs and lift me back up and I'd lower myself back down. And I eventually progressed from this onto a platform so we had the platform quite high so I could reach the pull-up bar and just jump and pull myself up to the right position and then lower myself back down slowly. So this meant I was doing the negative part of the pull-up and the negative part is a lot easier because our muscles are stronger eccentrically so when we're lowering ourselves rather than when we're lifting the weight. So most people can do a negative Part of the pull-up and this is what I found I had the strength to do the negative part and I could even hold myself at the bar for a little while but I still couldn't do a pull-up so after I'd been doing this for a couple of months we went on holiday to Mykonos we stayed in a, a lovely boutique hotel and they had a small gym and in the gym they had pull-up bars and I could actually reach the pull-up bars from the floor. So I said to Andrew, I've been doing these assisted pull-ups for a while now and I still can't do a pull-up. And he said, well, have a go. And I found that by wow. jumping off the floor and pulling Two. myself up, I managed to do three. So they weren't strictly proper unassisted pull-ups, but it did give me some motivation. <laughs> and I thought, right, I'm going to get home and I'm really going to go for it now. But what's interesting is I posted this video on my Instagram account and someone commented saying, it's weird because you're really ripped and you look strong enough to do pull-ups, but you can't do them. You should do some calisthenics to get your muscles working properly so you can do the pull-ups. And it's funny because it was 
calisthenics that had inspired me to do this to begin with. But when I got home, instead of looking for videos from cal people who did calisthenics on how to do a pull-up, I just looked for any videos on how to do pull-ups. And everything I tried didn't make any difference. I tried the assisted pull-up bars again, but all I achieved was more assisted reps and no unassisted pull-ups. Tried doing uh, rows on the Smith machine, pulling myself up at waist height. And again, I could do those, but it didn't help me progress. I realized now one of the problems was I wasn't committed enough. And really it took another six months. It was February, 2018. And I said to Andrew, by the end of 2018, I'm going to be able to do 10 pull-ups. That was my goal. And this time I wanted to do it and I was 100% committed. So on the 21st of February, 2018, we went to the gym. I was excited, I was motivated. We went to the pull-up bar. Andrew lifted me up so I could reach the bar and I went to pull myself up and I did no pull-ups. I couldn't pull myself up at all. However, I did do one chin-up. So basically it's just using different grips. So pull-up is an overhand grip and this is the hardest for most people of pull-ups. It really uses more of your back um, and the chinner uses more of your arms. In fact, I was using a neutral grip, um, which uses more of your arms and, and is a lot easier than the overhand grip. So at that time we were training every other day and we decided that we'd do one set of pull-ups and one set of chin-ups at the start of each training session with Andrew assisting me. And we did this for about four months and I was seeing very little progress. After four months, I could just do three unassisted pull-ups, just. And it, but it wasn't consistent. I couldn't do it every time. And if ever I said to Andrew, I can't do it, I'm not going to do it anymore, he'd just say to me, oh, fine, that's fine, just give up then if that's what you want to do. But that would actually motivate me to keep going. So I'm grateful to him for that. So I have to thank um, Sam, who was working at the gym at the time, for helping me to progress with my pull-ups. So Sam was training to be a sports massage therapist and I had designed his logo for him and he could see what I was trying to achieve. And one day he said to me, you need to do more. You need to be more consistent to be doing a lot more practice than you are. You need to do not just five reps, but five sets every time you come. And you need to do it every time and you need to keep it up. And he also told me to start to use a resistance band to help me with my pull-ups. And also to make sure that they were strict dead hang pull-ups. So I wasn't swinging or using my legs to kick myself up. It was very strict. So I got a band and I started to do my pull-ups using a band. Um, at that time, I could actually do 10 chin-ups unassisted. So what I decided to do was, with my chin-ups, I'd do my first couple of sets unassisted, but as soon as I started to drop the number of reps I could do below three, I'd then start to use the band. And with my pull-ups, because I knew I could barely do three, I didn't do any unassisted pull-ups. I went straight in with the um, bands and started to use the bands until I could consistently do a good set, a good amount with the band. And then I started to drop it back. And actually right at the start when I started to use the band, I could do seven pull-ups with my first set. And at last I started to see progress.
it took me five months from starting to be able to do 10 unassisted chin-ups and it took me nearly seven months from starting to be able to do 10 unassisted pull-ups but I didn't stop there I, I got up to do, being able to do about 14 unassisted pull-ups without stopping and each set that I did I was producing about a total of 35 pull-ups and 50 chin-ups and this was each time I trained so by this time I was doing a lot of reps and over the course of a week I was probably doing about 160 reps and I started to notice pain in my elbows and I realised it was golfer's elbow. So I'm a digital marketer and I work at my computer all day long. And so I'm susceptible to repetitive strain injury from that. And I think the pull-ups just push my elbows too far. The problem was I wasn't ready to give up what I'd taken so long to achieve. I knew I needed to cut my pull-ups back so what I started to do was I cut it back to just twice a week and just doing one set of 10 pull-ups with each set I always set myself a target that I wanted to achieve my 10 um, and eventually I actually had to drop it down to just one set a week but I was still maintaining each time I went to, to keep doing my 10 so I was pleased about that And the last time I did pull-ups was actually just before the gym closed in March because of the coronavirus. And it was when I did the banded pull-ups, which I showed a video of in, in earlier on in the video. I hadn't got any footage of banded pull-ups and I wanted to get some just to show you how to do them. And my elbows really hurt when we filmed that. Um, and after I'd done the banded ones I did a set of 10 uh, unassisted pull-ups and I just did it but my elbows were sore so I am having a break from pull-ups now and now I'm, I'm training at home I'm doing just body weight exercises so I'm actually revisiting my interest in calisthenics and I'm doing a lot of self-care to try and get my elbows better and in the meantime I'm researching, I'm doing a lot of research as, uh, about regressing back to the start of pull-ups and starting again but finding the best form and how I can perfect my technique so that I can protect my elbows. So that is my goal now is to get my elbows healed and better and then to start again. So my tips that I can share with you today if you want to have a go at doing pull-ups are to be patient, to be 100% committed, to be consistent, to always train, your, do your pull-up training at the beginning of any workout session so you have the most energy and strength available to you. Another really useful tip that I learned was to really engage your core before you do your pull-ups. You'd be surprised at how important it is to have your core engaged and how much that really helps. And also to learn how to activate the muscles that you're using to do the pull-up. And of course to use a band. 
So the other thing I recommend doing is keeping a record of the amount of pull-ups and chin-ups you do each time, even when you're doing none, um, which I was doing at the start. And I think it's useful to have this to refer back to because sometimes you don't realise you're progressing, but actually you are. And if you made a note of it, then you can check back and it is quite a good motivational tool. Um, so yeah definitely keep a record. I wish I'd done that with the push-ups that I had done. And so those are my main tips which really in the end worked for me. So good luck and let me know if you manage to do your first pull-up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I really need more subscribers. Um, and please share my channel with anyone who you think would find my videos useful. I'll see you next time.